Welcome to the dealer meeting RT workshop uh, 2021. Um, having the meeting, of course, digitally, I hope the video is entertaining for you and, and not too, um, too digital. I'll try to make it as interactive as we can, and I'm going to introduce some of the features of the RT, which is making the rounds and has a lot of people hyped up. Um, my name is Steve John. I head special projects for Rosenbauer, and one of these special projects is the RT that you see here behind me on the screen. Uh, the five main values that this vehicle has is, of course, ergonomics and health and safety. Health and safety because there is reduced or almost no CO2 production when you're on scene. There's no exhaust gases as there is no drive engine for the vehicle. Um, it has also no sound, so it emits very little sound. That means that there's no articular stress when working on an emergency scene, a rescue scene, or a car accident scene. Uh, the design of the vehicle itself, because it's all one monocoque actually, it's one, it's not a cabin and a superstructure, it's all one self-supporting structure, as you can see later. It is a very safe environment. It has a very, very low center of gravity due to the components uh, and therefore has a very passive or, or physically given stability or driving stability. That, in addition with the dynamic or the digital um, driving aids, such as EBS and ADAS, which I come to later. Um, connectivity, of course, everything nowadays is interconnected. The vehicle is a hub. You could, for example, have video calls on the display of the vehicle, video calls from one vehicle to the other. You could also uh, optionally order a drone with a vehicle or stream imaging from a drone on scene into the vehicle. Uh, it has a fleet management system, uh, meantime, between failure software, which helps in the maintenance and the operation of the vehicle and keeping an overview of your fleet of vehicles, if you would so. And of course, the total cost of ownership over one vehicle over a fleet is dramatically reduced when you have such vehicles as compared to traditionally driven vehicles. Um, the structure of the vehicle is all one. There is no chassis and no superstructure as we traditionally know. There's just one self-supporting frame body. It's all one unit, like most passenger cars that we drive today. Same principle. Uh, for the standard version, some, some measurements, we have 92 inches wide, 270 inches or 287 inches long total vehicle on the shortest wheelbase, and 115 inches tall without any equipment. Here are some specifics. I won't go through all of them, but just basically to mention that it has one or two batteries. Most customers have chosen the two battery version, so 100 kilowatts of power. We have a 350 kilowatt uh, peak electric power, which simulates about 485 horsepower on all four wheels. The vehicle has all wheel drive. It has two motors, one for the front, one for the rear, but it's all wheel drive. Um, we have, as you can see, we have four different ground clearances that have adjustable air suspension to be able to lower or raise the vehicle depending on the incident that I need it for. Uh, all of the lights are LEDs, it has disc brakes, it has a 250 up to a 1000 gallon tank, and of course can seat 2 plus 2 or 2 plus um, 7, so 9 in total in the crew cabin. And in addition to the battery power, there's a range extender on board. So the battery lasts for a certain amount of time. We come into that later. And when the battery, when you need more battery or longer incident times, more than one hour, let's say electrically arriving and pumping on the scene, there is a range extender, which is a generator, a diesel, diesel driven a generator, a six cylinder small car engine that drives a generator to recharge the batteries or to drive the water pump. 
Um, the chassis, if you would, suspension in the front, suspension in the rear, or one battery located in the middle. The second battery is vertically standing on the back uh, between the water tank and the back wall of the crew cabin. We have independent suspension from Hendrickson. We have four x four drive. And of course, we have three different wheelbases for the NFPA version due to the hose beds and the configuration that the first three customers have settled in. Most likely, all NFPA version vehicles will be 173 inch wheelbase. The architecture of the vehicle, range extender, which I was talking about before, located at the top with the generator. The pump is located right between uh, the, or right on top of the rear axle. Um, and then of course, all of the other components that show um, the rest of the vehicle. As I mentioned, we have the possibility, customers have the possibility to buy a one battery powered vehicle or a two battery powered vehicle. Uh, up to now, all have chosen the dual battery system for extra range and extra power. So we have either 50 or 100 kilowatt hours of uh, electricity, and we have a 200 kilowatt range extender on board. So the general, this is a, an approximation of the NFPA vehicle like Los Angeles, for example, or Portland. Um, so we have the longer wheelbase, 172 inch wheelbase. The green is indicating the two battery options, so one battery, each battery weighs 500 pounds. We have one battery in the floor in that backbone, the second battery located up against the back wall of the crew cabin. The water tank may vary, of course. Uh, and then the cassettes for the cross lays are located in compartment L1, L2. The range extenders being shown shadowed the diesel engine with a generator and the pump driven by a shaft can be driven electrically or diesel powered so I have both options for the water pump located above the rear axle. From the rear, the concept of the hose beds at the moment, depending on the amount of hose bed uh, that, that you carry or that they carry, is located at the back. It's hard to see, but the floor of the roof is lowered. And this area here is, let's say, freed for hose bed, either three inch, four inch or five inch and two and a half inch, one and a half inch on this side. This area at the top is also available for storage if we need to go higher or for uh, hard suction lines, for example, and ladders, if you would. So how long can you drive? I will skip to the two battery option because yeah, it's obviously half. But if I have two batteries, the batteries are charged to 100%. I can drive 62 miles in urban settings. So driving around in a city, accelerating, braking, I have a range of 62 miles electrically. After 62 miles, I reach 20% battery capacity upon which the range extender the generator automatically kicks in. It does it all by itself, starts charging the batteries. And with the 33 gallons of diesel I have on board, I have an additional 310-ish miles. So 370 mile range driving with a vehicle an electric, and with the additional range extender. Um, important, these are very, there's a lot of specifications, acceleration times. The most important one, and it's a longer, unfortunately we can't do it person to person. We could have a lot of questions on this. The most important one is this one. An electric vehicle dashes and sprints from the station to the first intersection, then to the second intersection, it accelerates and it brakes. That's all the vehicle does. So all of these, are of course, very interesting. The top speed people ask, how fast does it go? Yeah, it goes 68 miles an hour. That's not really important. Important is how fast does it get from here to there? So the 12 second dash for the, let's say the Usain Bolt, the 100 yard dash in 12 seconds or the acceleration up to 15, 20, 25 seconds, that's important because that's in a, in a city, that's all a fire truck does. The acceleration from an electric drive is of course, incredibly impressive. Four suspension heights, driving in city or let's say city driving mode, off-road driving mode, the vehicle raises up to 13.8 inches ground clearance. In normal cities, you're about 10 inches ground clearance. When you arrive on scene, the vehicle can be lowered to 6.9 or 7 inches ground clearance to allow ease of entering and exiting the cabin and reaching all of the equipment on board. 
And when you need either obstacles or for floods or high water, coastal areas with high waters like Miami, uh, like California, uh, Carolinas, Texas, we have floods. You can raise the vehicle, what we call wading mode or fording mode, to about 19 inches ground clearance. Water, uh, water level is approximately above to the top part of the wheels is where the vehicle has no problem. There's no engine that can have water intake and damage and have to rebuild the engine. As everything is IP68, all of the high voltage components, the motors, the connectors, they're all IP68 and that means it's submergible, they can drive underwater. Turning circles, again, a lot of data, very, very tight turning circle. We have two options with the rear axle. We can either steer in counter steering, so in normal counter steering mode, so you can have, have it off, just normal straight at the rear, have counter steering to make a very sharp turn, or you can have what we call the crab mode, so you can slightly up to 10 degrees drive sideways. Um, electronic driving aids like EBS, so it's electronic braking system, which includes or adds or leads to electronic parking brake or hill assist, which we know from our cars. Uh, we also have ADM, which is an automatic drive management, which simulates that if you lose traction, if you're on traction, uh, difficult areas like snow or wet or whatever, sand, mud, it automatically detects which wheel has a spin and it locks and unlocks the differentials uh, automatically. The driver just accelerates your brakes and the vehicle automatically sends the power to where it's needed. And then, of course, the very interesting one, ADAS, Automatic Driver Assistant System, which includes advanced emergency braking. So it has a radar plate located at the front bumper. That radar looks forward. If, you're, if you forget to brake and you're closing in on your, uh, of the vehicle or the person in front of you, it automatically carries out an emergency braking. Uh, it has front collision warning, obviously. It has lane departure assistant warning. It has a turning assistant and it also has blind spot monitoring with the uh, mirrors. So there's all these additional features, digital features, which make the vehicle together with its physical stability, uh, which is designed into the vehicle by structure, um, extremely, extremely safe driving. Cabin layout, that's one of the radical or the revolutionary parts of the cabin layout, as you can see from the diagrams. The driver and the officer are sitting in their normal positions. The crew is sitting either two or four facing each other with two or three additional possible seats against the rear wall. There's many, many configurations. Of course, the complete area um, of the cabin is floor. That means that you can basically stand up, as you can see here. You can stand up from either the driver or the officer's chair. You can stand up and just walk, simply walk out of the cabin if you need to. It's a 6.5 foot clearance at the top. So there's no obstacles, there's no doghouse, there's no noise. Um, designed in this way for ease of communication. And if you can see here, you can kind of see there's a digital operating panel or information screen in the front central part of the vehicle. And from every single seating position in the crew cab, any information on that display is visible. That means communication improvement, clear communication, preparation before they arrive on scene, makes for much more ease of communicating and preparing when, before they arrive on scene. The second aspect is for safety. Impacts on emergency vehicles statistically happen as a side impact. And when I have a side impact, the safest position is in line with the impact. That means that most of my crew is seated in the direction of impact. Um, of course, every seat is fitted with four point seat belts. So if there's an SABA or not, it doesn't matter. There's a four point seat belt at every seat, except driver and co-driver or um, release with one button release. Another view of the cabin from a little bit higher up. Very interesting. You can see in this one, the flat floor of the cabin. So I step with two steps up from seven inches ground clearance. I can walk into the cabin and very advantages, depending on the seat option, you have two swivelable seats. These two front seats, they swivel inwards, creating a six seat um, incident command room or the, or the vehicle becomes a command vehicle. So it's a pumper and it's a command vehicle because on the screen, you can have video imagery, building maps, 
uh, drone imagery, uh, conference calls from one vehicle to the other or from the mayor's office. So there's a lot of possibilities that I can create within this cell, within the crew compartment. It's just much, much more than just carrying uh, response crews. It becomes multi-purpose. Uh, there's a bit of a closer up of the dashboard, digital driver's dash and a digital main operating information screen. Think like a Tesla. It's, it's quite similar in the layout and the functionality. Some examples of the driver's dashboard. Again, my speed on the right hand side and my energy or which mode of energy up what energy I'm consuming on the left hand side. Battery power, fuel, add blue. And of course, many, many other um, information panels that I can call up with a multifunctional steering wheel. Some examples of the main dashboard. There's a main overview dashboard where I have the main, my main components. I can operate kind of like apps, illumination, emergency lights, traffic guide bar, illumination like this one, for example. Uh, the pump, the foam system if it's installed. And I have some quick access buttons on the top to automate a lot of functions on the vehicle. Uh, climate control, so fan, air conditioning, temperature, it's also all controlled from the 17 inch uh, touch screen. Conditioning unit, of course, standard AC unit with 5.8 kilowatts, uh, 5 to 8 kilowatts of power connected to the heating and the coolant of the batteries. Because when the batteries heat up, uh, we can cool them by extracting that heat and using that to heat the cabin. Uh, optional for those hot climates or hotter areas, of course, a roof mounted AC, uh, like in RVs, blowing air from the back of the crew cabin, if necessary, of course. We have, of course, a very low step in height into the crew cabin as you can see uh, it's very very ergonomic to get in and also to get out of the cabin it's just three small steps uh, outward and the last one of course very very low you can reach all the equipment from the floor there's no need to have fall down steps or to be able to or have to climb the vehicle or onto the vehicle to get heavy equipment especially out which is a huge relief of stress on, on the complete structure and the bone structure, hips and bones, and, and, and reduces a lot of injury for firefighters. Piping layout for an NFPA is like this. One thing that we cannot change, but again, up to now, nobody has had an issue, is that the intakes are at the rear of the vehicle. It is not possible to have side intakes. The intakes are at the rear for even for the, especially for the 1500 GPM pump. And we have possibilities to have side discharges on the left and on the right to two and a half inches, three inches, I think up to four inches. We also have options for roof monitors and front discharges. How much can I pump or how long can I pump? When I'm pumping at 520 GPM, at 145 PSI, if I start with batteries that are 100% full, I have one hour electric pumping capacity at that flow, constant. If I increase the flow, of course, that goes down. After one hour, when I reach 20% state of charge on the batteries, again, like in the driving, automatically, the range extender engages, and with the 33 gallons of fuel, if I have a full tank, 33 gallons of fuel, I have an additional five hours of pumping. So a total of autonomous or non-refueled 
pumping of six hours on our electric, five hours in, in range extension mode. Of course, the more I flow, the more that varies. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was interesting. Uh, we look forward to your questions. Send them in, and we will try and get your, your questions answered uh, as best and as quick as possible.